in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about, um, okay, it's been long. I hope you're still there. <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, networking, home networking. Now we are trying to establish a smart home here in Kenya. And uh, I believe that uh, the backbone of a smart home is a solid network infrastructure. Now, this is not those big data centers, servers, and all those kinds of things uh, that are owned by, you know, large companies. I'm just going to talk about a small home network setup and some things that you guys want to consider, especially if you are uh, building a house or if you want to sort of retrofit a house that exists and uh, create a smart home. Now, at the moment here, I am connected to the Safaricom Home Fiber. Silver, 30 Mbps, 4,100 shillings. I'm actually connected to this silver package. It's only 30 megabits per second. Um, if you look at other videos on the internet about, you know, a smart home and uh, home labs and so on, people talk about gigabits. <laughs> people talk about 2.5 five even 10 gigabits per second internet speeds i believe that that is a little bit on the higher end for most people but that should not prevent us from having or enjoying the benefits that come with a smart home and i'm hoping to make this like a series so that you guys can get to know more about what i mean when i talk about a smart home Okay, so the fiber coming in from the pole actually gets in with a power line through our meter box and uh, somehow it ends up in this other meter box on the house. Now, one thing I'd like to advise is uh, if you are going to be constructing a house in this day and age, make sure that you actually put in some conduits for your internet connection. Most electricians will think about only power and you have to actually remind them to put in some conduits, if possible even two or three, just for your internet connection and any other low voltage cables that you might want to, to get in. Let me give an example. You can see that we had to route a cable all the way via a conduit to somewhere here at the gate because I had or wanted to install this access point. This is the TP-Link EAP110, if I'm not wrong. This is an outdoor access point. This actually gives us Wi-Fi access to the outdoors, which is important because there's a lot of gadgets, devices out here that need Wi-Fi. Okay, now let's take a look at this box. This is actually a network cabinet. There's a conduit which brings in the fiber optic cable from out there to this cabinet. The point of this cabinet is to have most of our networking devices terminating over here. Now, if you're going to be building a house in this day and age, chances are you might want to have such a thing at some place somewhere in your house. It's good to leave at least a certain corner somewhere, a strategic place where you can have your networking gear. Maybe you can even have stuff like solar and so on if you're into that and such other devices, especially if you're into creating a smart home and so on. I regret purchasing this specific network cabinet because this is a for you cabinet in terms of capacity. What I mean in short is like there is a rack over here and over here where you screw in your devices and this unit can only accommodate like one, two, three, four. You can see that the bottom two units here are already occupied by some devices and I only have like two units left. That's why everything looks crammed in like this, but I'm going to be explaining what is happening over here. So I'm definitely going to change out this cabinet and if you're going to go this route, please get something like a 12U or even a floor standing 16, 24U cabinet. Because in our case, I'm even planning to have a whole home audio system of some sort. So there's even going to be some amplifiers somewhere in here. There's already some audio cables that are terminating somewhere at the back there. Don't worry about this polythene, by the way, up here. I'm just uh, protecting these uh, gadgets from dust. Because this place, as you can see, the walls are unfinished. We still have some work going on. Now, when the internet comes in via fiber, it gets into this box, this device. Get out, please. <laughs> okay, so the fiber gets into this box, which Safaricom provides. 
normally everyone that gets connected to Safaricom Home Fiber will get such a device. Everyone calls it a router, but it's more than just a router. This is actually a gateway, it's a router, it's a switch, it's an access point. This can route or channel traffic from your phone, computers and whatever other devices over to the internet. And that's why it's called a router. This also generates Wi-Fi, you know, it broadcasts a Wi-Fi signal, so it's also an access point, as it were. And there's actually some four yellow ports at the back here, which you could actually hardwire, connect some devices, a TV, whatever. And so this is actually a four-port switch. Now this yellow cable over here is the fiber optic cable that gets into the back of the device. And you can see I have one white cable. This is an Ethernet CAT6 cable plugged into one of the LAN ports of the device. And this is what basically supplies internet. Let me just take this back in here to the rest. So that white cable supplies internet to the rest of the devices. This is just a power cable for the router. Okay, get back in there. The white cable gets into one of the ports of this device down here. This device down here is actually a network switch. It's called the TP-Link SG2428P. The function of a network switch is basically the same thing a power strip does. You see this power strip? You get in one cable that brings in electricity, then it gives you like four sockets where you can plug in multiple gadgets. So the same way a network switch like this TP-Link SG2428P gives you multiple networking ports that you can plug in several devices and with one cable you get all those devices connected over to the internet via this router. So our SG2428P is actually a 24 port switch with PoE. That means it has 24 ports which each supply power over Ethernet. That's the meaning of PoE, power over Ethernet. Power over Ethernet basically is a way in which you can power devices using the same Ethernet cable that transmits data from the device. As an example, these cables over here are actually heading over to some CCTV cameras. Our CCTV cameras, because they are PoE enabled, don't need a separate cable for power. The same cable that brings in the image and the audio it also supplies power to the camera. So that's PoE power over Ethernet. So our switch gives us 24 PoE ports. And apart from the 24 PoE ports, whose speed is actually 1 gigabit per second each, we have four extra ports at the end here. I know it's difficult to see on camera, which are called SFP ports, small form factor pluggable which you could use to connect a router and so on, but right now those are unoccupied. Now this second gadget at the top here is called a patch panel. Basically it's just a cable management device. All the cables from cameras, from network outlets, from access points and so on, get into the patch panel first, then from here we have these short cables. These are called patch cables, which connect them to the switch. So our switch, as you can see, has security cameras connected. There's many other ports which look blank, but they just need cables connected. It's only that I'm not using the devices at the moment. We also have access points connected. Access points are devices that give us Wi-Fi to various corners of the home. At the moment, we have four access points here because believe it or not, Wi-Fi hates concrete. Once you have these multi-story buildings with a lot of stone and brick and cement that we build over here in Africa, just know you're going to be having poor Wi-Fi. This Safaricom gadget over here is not going to be giving you any sort of coverage anywhere in the compound or even in a certain corner room of the same floor. Concrete, my friends. That's why we have networking access points and the ones I use over here mostly are from a company called Ingenious. That is one of the access points we use. So this is connected via just one cable, as you can see. Right now it's actually on. It's broadcasting Wi-Fi. It's only that I disabled the LED light just because one of these access points is actually in the bedroom where we sleep. And we'd not like that blinking LED all night long, so yeah. Other than the access points and the security cameras, Connected to the SG2428 switch here are also networking outlets. We have physical outlets where you could plug in a computer, plug in whatever you'd want to plug in, even a TV. 
So here you can see we have an incomplete port here. This is a normal power outlet and this is actually an Ethernet outlet. You can see we have a CAT6 cable running to this port. We are yet to finish up with the wall and so on and place the wall plates on it. But you guys need to run these sort of cables to strategic places where you need to plug in devices. For example, I'm hoping to have here some sort of control panel screen that can control various devices in the home. That's why we have this power outlet and this networking cable right over here. So you might want to have such a setup, especially like where you want to place a display, even TVs. And you should actually run two cables for various reasons to each of these points. Again, from this SG2428 switch here, which is our main switch, we have other switches connected. And one of them is a tender router that I'm actually using as a switch. And the other one is actually a TP-Link SG108PE, which is a small 8-port switch that is powering some access points. So you could actually even have other switches in other spots depending on whatever you need. Now, this is not the end, this is just the beginning. We are going to be having some other devices here, like some hubs for smart home devices, Zigbee hubs and so on. You guys stay locked in the channel, there is quite a lot to share. Now, a few pointers as we bring this up to a close. This is basically just a DIY design. You could get professionals to design for you a complex network and so on but a lot of these things are basically simple you can do your own small home network for the sake of running a small smart home even here in kenya now if you forget everything this is what you need number one a reliable internet connection doesn't have to be super fast but the faster the better but it has to be accessible from nearly everywhere that you'll have your smart home devices placed and that will be in another video i'll show you why a smart home which devices i'm talking about you know there are so many sensors logs and what have you that are spread around here that need some sort of network connection then there's a bunch of settings how to configure stuff and so on having vlans all that kind of stuff that will be fodder for another video so guys you need to stay subscribed then number two if you're still in the process of planning that is like if you're still building and so on Especially in Kenya where we do build mostly via stone and mortar and concrete. You need to really plan these things ahead. It's actually quite difficult in these buildings of ours to pass cables after the fact. So if you are still in the process of construction, factor in a lot of conduits for low voltage, that is Ethernet cables. Uh, don't just do the power lines only. It will really, really set you back number three just know that the bigger you build the more complex the house and so on the more dead spots you are going to have so you are not going to be relying on that tiny safaricom or fiber or airtel box that you'll be given you'll have to have some network outlets access points here and there in your building so that is uh, one thing to factor in that's it for today, guys. I welcome your comments. If you'd like to share with me some ideas, you know, I'm also in the process of setting this up. I'm also learning. Stay subscribed. Subscribe if you haven't. See you in the next one. And as always, no pressure.